Fields of Gold, Ten Summoner's Tales by Sting, about his third or fourth solo album after, after The Police. This song uh, offers a lot of different things that you can work on as a guitar player. And in this particular lesson, we're going to look at not exactly what I just did there. That's coming. I'll tell you more about that when we get there. But what we're going to do in this song is really learn just a simple accompaniment way of keeping the, the rhythm going. So this is the accompaniment lesson to, to singing it. And we'll talk about some of the different keys that it can be done in because he plays it starting on B minor, basically in the key of B minor or D, the relative major. It, it, uh, when it finally resolves, it always resolves back to, to D. So it's really in the key of D. But it spends a lot of time in the relative minor key of B minor. And then it, uh, but it, and it uses chords all just straight out of, out of the key with a few unusual bass notes. So we'll take a look at, at what's going on in the left hand and the right hand. We'll also talk about playing it in a different key, transposing it down or up or capoing so that you can put, sing it in a better key. I'll sing this in a lower key. I'll take it down to A minor. So we'll talk about transposing the song into a lower key. We'll also talk about using a capo to change the key because, of course, Eva Cassidy did a stunning version of this song. And hers was done with a capo at the seventh fret. <laughs> playing pretty much the same chords, but she had a little bit more chord movement and some altered chords or chords that had extended notes in them. So there are a lot of, a lot of really neat thing, things in Eva's as well. That's another lesson as well. So this one is really just geared towards learning to strum the chords and sing it in the original key or in a key a whole step lower, and playing it with your fingers, though, and look at the hang of this percussive uh, strumming, where we're, where we're going to be hitting notes on the first beat, grabbing the chord on the first beat, and getting a little snap on the second beat. So we'll work on that, that little rhythm, and then otherwise you just have to strum through normal chords in the key of G. So let's uh, start talking about some of the chords and some of the patterns, and then we will work our way through Sting's version of Fields of Gold. Fields of Gold is in the key of D. It uses all chords, only chords at least, out of the key of D. So if you've seen some of my lessons on, on uh, theory and chord construction and all that kind of stuff, this will be old news to you. If you haven't though, let's go over some of it a little bit. In every major key, you've got the seven notes that make up the scale. In the case of the key of D, that would be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C sharp. Those are just the notes of the scale. Our D scale would be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Now, every one of those notes has a chord that it is the root of that is also in the key. And chords that fall on certain steps of the scale are always the same type of chord. So, chord number one is a major chord. That means the chord number one in the key of D is D. Chord number two, the second note of the scale was E, the second chord in every key is minor, E minor. B minor, the main chord that we need to keep getting back to, is played, of course, with a full bar at the second fret, and then a chord shaped like A minor. So you really have to have good command of your bar chords to, to be playing Fields of Gold. right hand, to keep this kind of slow, light bossa nova sound going, what we're going to be doing is pinching four notes with your thumb playing, I'm on the B minor chord right now, thumb playing the fifth string and the index fingers on the second, third, and fourth strings. Usually we want this to be a little subtler sound and not this. We don't need to hear the high notes in this chord as much, so I'm playing the four middle strings on the B minor. So to strum through Fields of Gold, all we have to do is keep that right hand picking pattern going more or less. There are some little subtle differences that happen according to different chord changes. So uh, as an introduction, just play four measures of B minor. You can play eight. That's how the, the real recording went. I'm just going to do four right now. There's our vamp. Again, in the right-hand close-up, I talked about that. It's a pinch of the four middle strings. On my B minor chord, I'm playing the fifth, fourth, second, and third strings, and grabbing them on one, 
On beat two, I'm putting my hand back, right ready to grab those strings, but hearing a little bit of noise of your fingers going onto the strings. Then I'm pinching it again on the and of two, and nothing on the and letting that ring over beat three, and coming in with a light brush up on the and of three, a light brush down with the backs of my nails, the up was done with my index finger, the downs are done with my nails of my second and third fingers, and then on the and of four, we want an open bass note. Going to an open A. This is when we have continual B minors in there. I want to talk a little bit about playing this in a different key, transposing it, because this song is just a little bit high for me to sing, starting on B minor. The melody note that we need to get, the highest note we need to get to in this song is a D. D is just a little high for me. Do, 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 do. If I practice more, I could do it. But I want to do this in a slightly more comfortable range. So I want to transpose it down a whole step. That's going to give me a whole set of chords, a different set of chords, that are not really any more difficult than the ones I just played. So very simply, one way to transpose a song is just move every chord the same distance down or up. Now, if you're going to go up, you can, of course, just use a capo and play the same set of chords. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. But the what I want to do is sing this lower than where it is. So I'm going to look at my B minor as my starting chord, and instead of playing starting on B minor, I want to start on a chord a whole step lower. A whole step lower than B is A. The type of chord has to stay the same. If I've got a minor chord here, it's a minor chord in my new key. So I'm going to A minor. That's going to put my starting note on C. That's a lot more comfortable for me. So all the B minors are going to get lowered a whole step to become A minors. A G in the original key will be lowered a whole step to become F. So I'm going to be using an F chord for those. So I'm going to sing through Fields of Gold here. I'll try the whole thing. We'll see how it goes. Four verses, then the bridge, fifth and sixth verse with the metronome in the key of A minor. Hopefully you've uh, transposed it. And now if you want to really put it in B minor, put a capo at the second fret and play the same set of chords. I'll put the metronome at 100. Let's see how that feels. Two, three, four. Four measures would be good. Here we go. You'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the so if everything made sense in everything you've seen up until now, you should be able to keep this song going, keep a nice little steady accompaniment going, and sing it in whatever key is best for you. Again, if you want to do it in the original and you want to play it using the A minor chords, put a capo at the second fret. If you want to just play the original without a capo, play the B minor set of chords. And just really work hard on this, this technique of being able to stop the strings on beat two. Sometimes we do it on beat four as well. There's a lot of percussive effects that happen in songs, and this is a great one to try this with that is not as complicated as it is in some other songs. There are a lot more song there are other songs that have use this same technique and it's a lot more involved. So uh, we have some of those floating around in here right now. I will not tell you what they are, I'll let you discover them for yourselves, but for yourself. This is mm, plural singular, whatever. So, um, And again, feel free to capo it any place. If you're going to capo it, you could still use, like you could put a capo at the fourth fret and still start on a B minor. 